Hi, my name's Gabriel Campbell, and I'm here today to talk to you about the effects of container type, substrate type, and fertilizer rate on the growth of Santel milkweed. Scientific name, Asclepius humistrata. A little bit of background on this plant. It is a native southeastern USA plant. It's an herbaceous perennial. It has a long tuberous root. It occurs in areas with dry soil and full sun. Some of the common plant communities it occurs in are things like sand hills, scrub, and in the panhandle of Florida on these coastal dunes you can see pictured here. This plant has incredible ornamental and restoration value both for its uh, purple leaves and its use as a uh, monarch butterfly host plant. And that's what's seen here is a uh, caterpillar munch on one of the leaves of a sandhill milkweed. So it's really important for these spring breeding monarchs that come from Mexico and lay their eggs on these plants in the early spring. So what do we know about this plant in terms of its propagation and production? Well, it happens to be the topic of my master's work. I did some seed germination experiments on this plant and basically what I found out was that the seeds do not require any pre-treatments meaning they don't have any type of dormancy, at least for the populations I collected, which were throughout the state of Florida. They prefer to germinate in uh, moderate temperatures around room temperature, and they seem to like dark better than light. However, these plants, and I can speak from personal experience and from speaking with uh, other native plant growers in the area, that they are very difficult to grow and transplant in terms of getting the plant to a large size and uh, successfully putting them out into whether it's a garden setting or a restoration setting. Seems to be something about that process that's difficult for this plant. So basically the rest of my talk is going to be talking about two different experiments and these experiments are trying to answer the research questions of what are the effects of substrate type, container type, and fertilizer rate on Sand Hill milkweed seedling performance growing within a greenhouse container production system. So experiment one talks about the effects of substrate and container type, and experiment two talks about the effects of fertilizer rate. So in experiment one, we used four different substrates. We have what we call a standard, which is a mix of pine bark and a peat-based bag mix. And this is a substrate that we have had success growing here at the UF Milton Research Facility that I'm at. Um, it's got nice drainage, uh, but it also has perlite, and perlite seen, is seen as a potential pollution f uh, by land managers within ecosystem restoration contexts. And perlite's these white little balls you can see in the standard substrate pictured here. Uh, there's some concern about animals eating it, and it persists in the environment. It fluffs around if, uh, if it's out of the soil. So we also used two substrates that had uh, this new product in the market called hydrofiber, and it's basically uh, long strands of wood that have been heated and pressurized. So we, we used this hydrofiber with 70% coir or 70% peat, and we also looked at uh, sunshine mix, which is a sun grow product, and it's basically just peat and a peatland aggregate. And it's uh, worth noting that these last three substrates to talk about do not have perlite. We also looked at four different containers. We looked at standard liners, which are what our uh, typical production system. We looked at 48 and 32 cell liners. And we also looked at tree tubes, which were the same volume as these liners. So the liners on the left and the liner on the right corresponds to the tube on the left and the tube on the right in terms of volume. And these uh, tree tubes, they have a deeper soil profile, so they're expected to be a better, um, produce a better plant for restoration purposes. This long, um, steep soil profile allows the, the root to have access to soil moisture. So like I was saying before, we've got a small size, which is around 100 mils, and both a liner and a short tree tube, and we have a large size liner and tree tube. 
So the data we collect on this experiment, uh, we collected it once after 16 weeks. We collected the emergence uh, of the seedlings. And then from that point on, we measured the survival of the seedlings. We also measured the plant height. We also took the dry weights of this plant uh, and we broke it out into the different tissues. We looked at the shoots, which are the above ground portion circled here. The tubers, which is this long uh, tuberous root structure, it kind of looks like a mini carrot. And we also looked at the roots. So we weighed those three separately and we also then totaled all those weights. The first response that we measured was germination. And we found that, as depicted on this graph, that um, substrate type did not have an effect on germination. And in this slide and throughout the rest of the slides, these lowercase letters above the bars, if they share the same letter, then they're not statistically different. So container type, we found, was there was some differences. So the container type did affect the germination. And we found that the plants growing within the short tree tubes had less germination compared to the 48 cell liners. Survival was the next variable that we recorded. And substrate type did have an effect on survival, as shown here. The plants grown in the hydrofiber and peat substrate had lower survival than the standard and the sunshine substrate. Container type also affected survival percentages, as shown here. And we found that the plants growing within the tall tree tubes had a higher survival compared to plants growing within the 48 cell liners. We found the interaction of container type and substrate type to be significant on the height. And we found that plants growing in the tall tubes in both the hydrofiber and peat substrate and the sunshine mix substrate uh, were the tallest plants recorded. We also found that uh, the height of the plants was the same, or the plants were taller for all perlite-free substrates compared to the standard. So that's what this is showing here. We found that substrate type had an effect on some of the tissues being produced. So these uppercase letters here denote the total dry weight, which is uh, addition of the shoot, the tubers, and the roots. So we found here that the sunshine mix over on the right, which has the A, was produced larger plants than the other three substrates. Same thing with the shoots. The plants growing in the sunshine mix had the, the largest shoots. And the largest tubers were plants grown in the sunshine mix or in the standard compared to the other two substrates and we found that there was increased root production as well for the plants growing in the sunshine substrate compared to the other three. Likewise, we found that the container type affected the dry weight of the plants grown. So the, the plants grown in the large containers uh, were larger than the plants grown in the small containers, but within the large and small containers, the different whether it was a liner or a tree tube, that did not make a difference. Same response for the shoot growth. And for the tubers, we found that the plants growing in the tall tree tubes, they had the largest amount of tuber production compared to uh, the rest of the container types. And there was no, different, no difference in root production. So the next experiment that we're going to talk about is an experiment I did that looked at three different fertilizer rates. And these rates are calculated per volume based on the, Os or the Osmocote manufacturer recommended levels that are um, posted on their, on their label. So for this particular experiment, I grew these in 48 cell liners, one of the container types we just talked about. And these are the amounts I put per plant. For experiment two, we collected survival data and dry weights data like we did in the experiment one. But we also collected a plant index. And to calculate this plant index, what we did is we took the average of two widths plus the, a height. And then we averaged those. So we averaged two widths and a height. 
And again, this, the width is what we perceived as the widest portion of the plant. That's the first width. The second width is the width angle, or is the width perpendicular to what we perceived as the widest portion of the plant. So we found that um, fertilizer rate did affect survival. And again, I include the amounts here for your reference for the different fertilizer rates. We found that a high fertilizer application actually reduced survival compared to a medium fertilizer rate. We also found that fertilizer rate had an effect on plant index, where the plants fertilized with high fertilizer were larger than plants fertilized with the low fertilizer. However, there were no differences between a medium fertilizer and a high fertilizer. We found that um, fertilizer rate did have an effect on some of the tissues produced. However, for the total tissue amount produced, it was the same. It was the same for the shoots, the same amount was produced, and the same for the tubers. However, there was reduced root production in the, for the plants fertilized with a high rate compared to a medium rate. Here's a picture kind of just showing that, showing the, the plants as they were being destructed we harvest. We look at the high uh, plant with the high fertilizer rate on the right. Hopefully you can see that it has less uh, roots being produced. So it's mainly just tuber and a few, few roots below ground. So discuss the two experiments here. I want to leave you all with a couple takeaway messages for experiment one. We recommend using the sunshine mix in tall tree tubes because there was high survival and increased growth and in particular tuber growth, which for restoration purposes um, is advantageous, especially for coastal dune restoration where a lot of the above ground foliage uh, when you outplant it, it might just fry up, fry in the sun, especially if it's uh, summer planting. So good uh, carbohydrates below ground is, is definitely a plus. And for experiment two, based on the data we collected, we're recommending a medium fertilizer rate. And again, this is because it had high survival and it had uh, good growth. A special thanks to all the people who helped with this project, uh, Liz Miller, Gina Mangold, and Alice Martineau. They were uh, definitely, couldn't have done the project without them. They collected a lot of data and helped a lot in the greenhouse. This uh, work was funded by the Florida Wildflower Foundation, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and USDA NIFA. Thanks.